Greetings ladies and metagents and welcome to this narration of the web series The Nature of Predators. If you are new to the series there is a playlist listed in the description. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Chapter 50 Memory Transcription Subject Captain Caslam, Krakotl Alliance Command Date, Standardized Human Time, October 17th, 2136 The Predator's formation was disintegrating and it looked likely that we would secure victory within the hour. I considered broadcasting an apology to the surface. Once Earth's space fleet was exhausted, the unfortunate civilians knew they were witnessing the last days of their civilization. Did the humans not deserve the solace of an explanation? There was a part of me that wondered if we could have found another way. The issue was their growth and reproduction, which would be exponential if left unchecked. Maybe we could have isolated any humans who surrendered on an abandoned world, sterilizing and prohibiting breeding. That way, the existing primates could live out the rest of their lifespans without the option to prowl the stars. What if there was another path to achieve extinction without the deaths of billions? Oh, Castle, such thinking is counterproductive. Zan, any update on Thion? I asked, hoping for a brief destruction. The doctor took several seconds to respond. The first officer is in a medically induced coma, but I've managed to freeze the brain swelling. you will live, though I can't predict the long-term effects, sir. Some tension was lifted from my wings, with the assurance that the fossil would survive. This entire crew needed a piece of good news. We were set to join the next bombing rush. All remaining Federation ships were partaking in the charge. This was a chance to strike down every last craft that the humans had limping above the world. By the way, I quite enjoyed the show from my little window. I much preferred it when we thought all of these nasty creatures were dead. Zahn added, whatever your predator delusions, you should be proud of yourself, Captain. I tossed my beak in disdain, not dignifying that statement with a response. Relations between myself and the Takan practitioner would be much better if he kept his opinions quiet. My talons swiped through the screens, ensuring that our payloads were in working order. All systems were operational on board. There was just a small diff in our shield capacity. Our vessel fell into the rear of the advance, and navigations increased our acceleration. We would have control over the final targets, which might require flexibility. My expertise would come in handy assigning relative importance to locations. Why did it feel so wrong to speak about Terran settlements in those terms? Thoughts of Nishtal's impending invasion weighed on my mind, too. There might not be any home to go back to. Krakotl civilization would be the last casualty to Terran brutality. But that didn't ease the horror of it. We might be forgotten by the Federation within decades. Just another species that fell to the Arxel. I hoped historians would appreciate our sacrifice. Alarms flashed on sensors, snapping me out of my torturous musings. Several allied vessels had been picked apart by precision strikes, right beside us. The rear flank was blindsided by hundreds of blips who were darting in between our flotilla. The newcomers were trying to shove their way to the Terran fortifications. Ready weapons and fire at anything we don't recognize, I screeched. Where did these bastards come from? They're a little late if they're humans. My comms technician shuffled nervously. I just finished decoding communications between a Terran command post and the vessels. The Zerulians sent military assistance. You've got to be joking. The Zerulians have a fledgling, erroneous association with the humans. What have the Predators ever done for them? Jala snickered. Never mind, Captain. I'm pretty sure the Galactic Institute of Medicine and their 20 ships aren't going to tip the scales either way. That's not the point, comms. I need to know these developments ahead of time. He's right. Sars forbid the Yotl show up with the Tribuge next. Sociopath, Bane, a swooning motion. Then we'll be really screwed. I huffed in irritation, watching as our ships turned to face the Zerulean hostile. The quadrupeds gave us a wide berth and dodged Jala's Erin plasma beam. Several Federation captains were calling out conflicting orders on the comms, which led to disarray. Exhaustion was making it difficult to recall foreign military techniques, so I couldn't find a solid advice to offer. The Terran fleet were advancing on our front lines, capitalizing on the breakdown of command. Cursing the Zerillian fools, I barked orders to pull back and regroup within the lunar orbit. 
This was a waste of precious time, and could be vital to the defense of our home. We weren't going to leave an extermination half done. We'll get our bearings and charge at Earth again. Perhaps we can still accomplish this quickly. The Federation reassembled, adjusting for the fresh reinforcements. The numerical advantage was still slanted in our side, and prey wouldn't fight half as well as a human. However, it might be difficult for the crew to fire on Zerudi. We had accepted that the Vandal were reduced to predatory thralls, but this race was a new convert. The Zerulians chose their side, and they chose wrong. I know it seems harsh to strike them down, but they put themselves here. I surveyed the expressions of my crew, noting how distraught they looked. If the Arxal are truly attacking our homes, this might cost us our entire civilization. Everything is on the line. There is no time for bargaining. Jala hissed in frustration as she realized our missiles were depleted. Perhaps she shouldn't have been so liberal with their usage. The plasma railgun had recharged, but I wasn't sure how long our gas supply was running. We couldn't afford to have only kinetics at our disposal. Discretion was required going forward. The Zerulian fleet fell in beside the humans, though they seemed wary of drawing too close. There was no basis for those fears. The risk of Terrans attacking their allies now was negligible, these predators were too smart to betray useful assets that Earth needed so desperately. They weren't just raving beasts. Sir, more unknown ships incoming. There's... My comms officer trailed off. I blinked. Where from? How many? Speak! Thousands. The subspace trails are from all over the place. My confusion intensified, and I attempted to stave off my sleep-deprived stoop. The humans didn't have many Federation allies, to my knowledge. Only six could respond in time. Two of those partners were already here. The neutral powers had no intent of interfering either way, since it would simplify their stance if we succeeded. But no single Federation race had that many ships at their beck and call. This had to be some sort of group of our alliance. Maybe these were the weakest species that had been coerced. Others might give in to cheap tactics if their home worlds were held hostage. That, or the humans had found a way to deceive our senses, these contacts could be decoys meant to sow confusion. How would such a trick even work, though? The comms analyst scratched her crown. Sir, we're picking up a looping transmission from this mystery fleet. It's directed towards Earth, putting it on screen now. My beak nearly split open as the video feed materialized. Those slit pupils were unmistakable identifier of Arxor. I was uncertain whether their eye shape was solely for ambush hunting, or if they allowed the greys to stalk at dusk. It made human vision seem like love beacons by comparison. This is Chief Hunter Isiv, the reptile clicked. Forgive our tardiness, but we did request that you disable FTL disruptors multiple times. Hang in there, humans. We're here to help. A few crewmates were sobbing from the beast's projection. Even the extermination officer like myself was paralyzed by those dagger-like teeth, jutting out from the truncated maw. The length of its gullet, visible as it spoke, was a ghastly sight. Why were the greys not laughing at the loss of life on Earth? Those demons delighted in death and suffering. They went out of their way to cause it. They didn't seem within their behavioral pattern to save a weaker sapien, even if that species were predators. I don't understand any of this. How are the Terrans responding? I stammered. The comms technician pecked away at a station. Lots of chatter from the human coalition. It doesn't appear that their command was expecting the Arcs, or though that would be a staged for benefit for their uh, less vile friends. Crap, the Zerillians and the Venlil can't be happy about this, can they? No, sir. The Zerillians are demanding to know why the Arcs are here, and the Venlil are asking why they were not informed. The Terran response, the humans claim they didn't invite the Greys, but aren't in a position to reject their help. They suggest that their allies go with it, unless they prefer to fight the reptilians too. The response to the Arxal offered thanks and insisted those two prey races are friendly. Of course, that's what a clever monkey said. They excelled in manipulation tactics and they're using both parties. I leaned back on my perch, wondering if this would kill the Zerillian's ties to humanity. This should unmask the truth about Earthlings' long-term goals. Perhaps we can convince the other races to stand with us. By the time they spent pleading with them would allow the Arxal to pounce. If the Greys were genuine in their intention, the tide of this battle would turn decisively. The numerical edge was in the Terran's favor, but these new additions, not to mention the psychological impact the Arxal presence had, 
many Federation vessels were panicking at the prospect. We had to break through the orbital range with haste. There is no escape route, and uh, we stand no chance against the Greys, but we can make our deaths mean something to the galaxy, I squawked, on the fleet-wide frequency. We must get as many bombs off against Earth as possible. All Federation vessels charge at max velocity. The crack hurdle on our fleet bolstered forward, right towards the waiting human alliance. The Zerillians hesitated, not firing on either party. The quadrupeds, reluctant to abet arcs or allies, made them an obvious point of entry. The rail guns were powered up, but few of them acted even as we closed in. The Zerillians came to a decision and dropped into a defensive position. Vasma arced through towards us. I saw my life flash before my eyes. The beam sailed just off to our side and obliterated the neighboring ally that was keeping pace with us. If their aim was as half a degree different, it would have been my vessel in tatters. There was no time to gawk at the wreckage left behind, the arcs all swooping in on any stragglers, while I wasn't proud of the extermination itself. Our sacrifice was valiant and honorable. The crack kotal fleet knew the most of us were about to die, but the captains had to commit to finish the job. The arcs are off swallowing our rear flanks, sir. Their ships are gaining on us faster than we can move, Jala called out. Should we turn and stall them? I puffed out my feathers. Absolutely not. Keep going. According to sensors, the reptilians' maximum speed was much higher than we'd ever documented. I realized that they had been conceding their technological limits. Two grey bombers selected us as their quarry and sent drive-tracking missiles in our direction. Jala shoved the nav officer out of the way, deploying a stream of interceptors in the nick of time. A Terran robot ship had also spotted us and launched supercharged plasma at our position. We barreled through the Zerillian line with urgency. They were no longer a comparative importance. My sociopath rerouted all power from shields to engine. The core was already overheating from exertion. Before the stunt, the female crocotl didn't quite manage to get ahead of the inbound plasma. It plowed into our aft compartment. The alarms began ringing overhead, while crewmates screeched in terror. My readout informed me that steering was offline, and the engine was listed as critical failure. We're stuck in a one-way ticket towards Earth. This ship is going to crash, assuming it doesn't get blown up to bits first. All crew to escape shuttles, I shrieked, as loud as I could. The personnel didn't need to be told twice, as the flapping of wings drowned everything out. I took a deep breath. It was up to me to finish the job. We were about 30 seconds from orbital distance, and these two bombs could cross a million humans off the list. Jala began to abandon her perch, which earned her a withering glare from me. Get back here. I know you want to save yourself, but the rest of the crew will kill you for being a predator. I jabbed a talon at her, then pointed to the weapon station. You have no future, no place in society without me. So you're going to stay right here until the job is done. She hesitated but was persuaded by my argument. The overhead power flicked out as the engine began to melt nearby systems. The emergency lights colored the floorboards a dim hue, and only essential functions were available. A plethora of enemies were still chasing our runaway ship. With our shield power rerouted away, there was no disincentive to use kinetics. Oxal bullets plowed through our armor, and the Terran automaton chipped in its own lead ammunition. Requesting assistance in the med bay, Zahn panted over the comms. I am unable to carry Thion on my own, nor am I able to fly the emergency medical pod. Captain, anyone? I sighed. I'll be there in a minute. Hold on, Doctor. The Terran robot was recharging its weapons, but struggled to keep up with the unsafe speed. Fear burned through my veins. I offered a silent prayer that we would survive long enough to complete the mission. It was a few more seconds until we could deploy the antimatter bombs. The human contraption didn't target us from outside a reliable range. Arxor munitions were inflicting steady damage, but they hadn't caused any catastrophic explosions. We hobbled into orbital range and established target locks on two Terran cities. Jala slammed a beak on the firing mechanism. I gave her a nod, and we fled from the bridge with urgency. The journey was a blur as we swooped down to the evacuation stairwell. Jala bowled through the door to the medbay, examining a pacing Zahn. The Tukan doctor had thrown some supplies on his diagnostic shuttle. I was surprised that he just didn't leave Thion behind. The unconscious Versal had a clump of bandages around his head. It was painful to see him comatose on a cot. 
You took your time, Zahn spat. Mike glared at him. We came as fast as we could. I think you, of all people, would want us to make sure that the explosives made it to Earth. The ship rocked around us, barely swallowing a hit from our enemies. There was no time for bickering, if we were to survive. The three of us shouldered Thion's weight and deposited him into the pod's rear seat. The doctor strapped the injured patient in as Jala and I brought the shuttle online. The vibrations intensified around us, likely from our vessels entering the Earth's atmosphere. Without heat shielding on our damaged areas, the main hull was going to be incinerated. Jala closed the exit hatch and we jettisoned the shuttle. The controls would have to be learned on the fly. Cerulean sky surrounded us out the window as we plummeted towards the ground. The momentum of the ship's breakneck ball had carried over. I wrestled with the control column and tried to steady us. Jala flung all power to thrusters, but it could only slow us down so quickly. No, 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 no! We can't be stranded on a predator's planet! We have to get back to, to our fleet! Land was rushing up to meet us as much as too fast, even as our velocity lessened. Impact looked to be an inevitability. There was nothing I could do to prevent it. My body snapped back in the harness, and our shuttles barely collided with foreign grass. End of chapter. I would quickly like to thank our tier 5 patrons and channel members. Caspar Arnholt, Cam Maxwell, it's difficult to pronounce, Lord Arishakal, Dragzoon, WRE, and Arcadian. Thank you very much.